Hey, it's Jamie Moore here, and you're very welcome to the first episode of my brand new podcast. It's called Ireland Away From Home, and every week I'm going to be chatting to different footballers and coaches and ex-footballers and any other sports person, for that matter, who's away from Ireland at the moment, playing or coaching or continuing their career. And on episode one, we're off to America, and I'm joined on Skype by uh, James Chambers, Jordan Darty, and Owen Weiran. Lads, good afternoon where I am. Good morning where you are. How's things? Afternoon, good, yeah. Jay. Yeah, all good over here. Yeah, thanks very much for uh, having a chat. Yeah, good, thanks, James. So, James, 33, I hate to tell you, he's in Philadelphia uh, playing a coach and played over 120 games for Bethlehem Steel. Moved to the States in 2016 after a great League of Ireland career, most notably with Shell, Shamrock Rovers and Pats. Also played in Scotland. Owen is 27. He's in Texas. Went to West Ham as a teenager. Played in the league with Sligo, Bowes and Limerick. And just before his move, he was playing up north with Glenavon. And Jordan is the baby. He's 19 and he's in sunny Florida. He's... Played for Sheffield United when he turned 16 and subsequently went on loan to Tampa Bay Rowdies in Florida and he's now signed a permanent deal. And you're all Ireland underage internationals as well. So that's a brief overview, lads. And before we talk about the football, how is life in lockdown in the States? And uh, the advice from President Trump, I'm sure you haven't been drinking much debt all. <laughs> no, I've been, I've been just working away. It's been, it's been fun, really. Uh, not a lot to do, but... To be fair, I'm in Florida, so, you know, it's nice to get out and have the sun and stuff, which is good. I'm sure you haven't got that, Jay, but, yeah, no, it's, it's been all right for me. I've just been, what, what can you do, you know? Just take it day by day and deal with it. For you, James, it's uh, not as warm as where Jordan is? No, it's not. It's not Tampa, certainly not. But it's the, the weather's starting to turn now. It's a little bit warmer, so it's, uh, look, it's, it's not ideal. It's, it's an extreme situation to be in, but you've just got to make the best of it and, and look after yourself, look after the close ones around you, and, and hopefully we all come out with the other side of this eventually. And for you, Owen, you're in, Fl- you're in uh, not in Florida, you're in Texas. What's it like up there? Similar to Jordan. It's uh, it's about 30 degrees here at the moment, nearly every day, so it's actually perfect. I'm enjoying the spring weather because I've been told now, once it comes into the summer, it's going to be closer to 40 and stuff like that. So um, this is perfect for actually getting out and doing things, going on walks, going on jogs. So um, still plenty to do. And we were having a joke just before we started recording about the uh, hairstyles and the beards. Jordan, you've managed to get, give yourself a home hairstyle. James has a fantastic beard and Owen has a bit of both. <laughs> I'm just hoping think, my beard doesn't come off in the wind. <laughs> <laughs> That's about it. <laughs> I think we're all having to make do with what we have at the moment, so uh, can't be too fussy. Yeah, I'm sure everyone's uh, trying to do the same. <laughs> Uh, lads, let's start with the youngest person in the group, Jordan. Give us your story about a little bit of uh, your time in Ireland and also how you moved to the States and stuff. Um, so, I think my, my first club was Bals Garden, just a local club where I'm from, pretty much. Uh, then I played at home farm for eight and a half years. And then obviously from there I went on went on a couple of trials, eventually signed for Sheffield. And I spent five years there, really good. And then I came on loan here to Tampa last season. And obviously we had a great year last year, you know, broke loads of like records, like club records and stuff. Had a really good season and I loved it. And then basically when I had the chance or the opportunity to come back here, like it was, it was a bit of a no-brainer for me personally. Like, I mean, the weather, like the team, the club, whatever. It was just like, it just suited me very well. And obviously it was the way my career was going, it was probably the best option for me to come and, get game time and play games and stuff and men's football so that's probably that's that's it really that's and that's where I'm at now you know obviously we kicked off this season but stuff happened and whatever so that's it really yeah here we are now Owen for you how did you end up in the States after a career as I said at a couple of League of Ireland clubs some time up north some coaching from an early age and a couple of bad injuries as well well it probably started um Back in my last year at West Ham when I had my first ACL, um, returned to the League of Ireland the following year. And even though I had, you know, six great seasons in the League of Ireland, um, I also had two other knee operations as well. So while doing that, I was doing my business degree, um, currently just finishing off the A licence. So I started working towards that, working in uh, St. Kevin's Boys, my old school boy club. And in the Bowers underage teams as well, and just found that love for coaching basically. And you know, even though I'm 27, uh, my hand's been forced a little bit in terms of maybe thinking about the coaching route a little bit sooner than than I would have liked. But um, I have to say, my first three months that I've been out here, um, I've been really good. No regrets on it. 
Um, lifestyle's fantastic. I'm still playing. Or oh, when this is all over, I'll still be playing at a decent level in the MPSL. So um, that was a big thing for me, obviously, to still be playing in some shape or form because you know you don't know what's going to come in the future. But um, yeah, it just came about basically from from contacts. It was actually from Jay McGuinness, who I met while on the A license back in November. Um, obviously, he's involved at one of the Cabra courses and just sort of known uh, mutual friends and stuff like that. And once the opportunity came about, it was, uh, again, similar to Jordan. It just felt like it was a right fit and it was a no-brainer for me at the time as well. And for you, James, you've been in the States a lot longer than the other couple of lads and you've been doing some coaching and you've played lots of games as well. So how did you end up there again after, you know, playing in, in the league here for probably nine or ten years before that? Yeah, I, I think I kind of just, like, I fancied the change and I knew I was, I was coming up to, to hitting my 30s was around the corner at that stage. So I just fancied the change of scenery, something different, than the opportunity arose to come out and, and I kind of just jumped at it. It was it was too good to turn down and we had some ups and downs throughout the, the four years that I played. I, I enjoyed it. I, I kind of felt that when I was coming out that I was I was looking at doing the coaching side of things when it when it finished. And thankfully I put myself in a position over the last two and a half years that I can just transition into the coaching now. So that's what I currently am with I'm still playing kind of in in a small little capacity with a with a men's league team. It's not at any kind of high level. It's just for for shits and giggles. But it's uh, it's it's still playing the game, and I'm and I'm I'm enjoying the coaching. I love it. It's it's great. It's, it's really really a different a different aspect of the game. You know, you think when you play that you, you might have an idea of it, and coach coaching's a whole different ball game. So for you, James, like when the opportunity came to go and play in America, and again, those watching and listening might not know about the USL in comparison to the MLS and the standard that it was and how you ended up there. You might just explain, you know, you played over 120 games and I think for a lot of that spell, you were the captain of Bethlehem Steel, who, as far as I'm aware, are like a link club to one of the MLS clubs. Is that right? Yeah, so we we, we were set up initially as as, as a, a feeder team to help bring young, young players through. And over the years, the... The, the profile of the club started to change a little bit more where it was more and more younger players. So my role was to help bring through young players and and kind of be be a more senior figure, one of the only ones in on the team, and help these young lads to transition into into first team football for, for MLS. You know, so that that was my role and and combined with that over like I said over the last two and a half years I've been coaching with, with a U eleven group last year and this year I have a U nine group in our in our Philadelphia Union pre academy. So it's, it's, it's fantastic. The lifestyle has been great. I've got the captain an awful lot of good players and see them progress who are now playing for the MLS team, Philadelphia Union, and their, their national team players as well with the US. So it's been great. It's been, been really, really good. And it's been, been a lesson for me too. And for you, Jordan, you were you know, at a Premier League club and I'm sure at the age of 19, trying to break into their first team for anybody would be quite difficult. So you might talk us through kind of how the first opportunity for the initial loan to Tampa Bay Rowdies came up and your first experiences of, of playing over there and, and playing against Mr. Wayne Rooney. Um, yeah, it was a bit of a weird one for me. Obviously, I was I was just in my apartment one night and I got a phone call off my agent. He kind of says to me, uh, she basically said, how would you feel about going to play for a year in Florida? And obviously, like, I, you know, that wasn't really like the call I was expecting at the time. Obviously, I was looking to get on loan. And, yeah, it was a bit of a weird one initially, but then, obviously, I spoke to the manager here, spoke to a couple of, like, family members and stuff about it, and then just basically took the risk and came. Didn't really know much about it at the start, didn't know what the standard was like, the place, whatever. First time in the US, so it was a bit, it was a bit of a weird one, like, a bit of a risk, but, uh, no, I came really, really enjoyed it. Uh, it was really good, and I think the way it worked out was, the gaffer here had obviously he had a good career. He played loads of teams in England, played for Sheffield. And he had spoke to the academy manager at Sheffield United, spoke to him looking for players, whatever, and uh, they ended up speaking about me. And it just kind of worked out that way, really. And then the assistant, in fact, was he, he had the same agency as me. So it was just kind of like a perfect, just worked out to be perfect. Like, so that's pretty much how I got over here, came over here, and then. Obviously, not known. I didn't know too much about the USL coming over. Uh, didn't know what the standard was like, whatever. But to be fair, I think the lads might agree with me, or whatever. But I think that the league is a lot better than what people might think at first. You know, 
like I was really surprised when when I came over and seen like the players. Some of the players that I've played against, and some of the players that I've played with, have been like amazing, really. Like so, it was a, it was a real big shock, but a pleasant one. Um, so yeah, it was really good. And then obviously playing against Rooney. What can you say about that? You know, that was that was crazy, a dream really. Growing up supporting Man U and playing against your childhood heroes, stuff of dreams, isn't it really? Yeah, and for you, Owen, I know we had a good chat the other night on WhatsApp audio about the reasons why you're there and you were playing in the NIFL up north and you, you were still in contract as far as I'm aware and you made the op- you, you made the, the jump to go to the States. So why did you make that and, and you know, how have your first couple of, of months there been? Of course, the virus has, has stunted the football for the moment, but even before that, and, and I'm sure plans to get back at it quite soon. Yeah, like so last season i um I was coaching the Bowes fifteens on the fifteen League of Ireland side. Um you know, full of really good players, four international players involved there, like the likes of Evan Ferguson and stuff. So, you, you know, you're coaching good quality players, um, balancing that with playing up north. Obviously, really enjoyed my time up there. League's very different to the League of Ireland, um, but still really enjoyed it. Met some great people up there. And Glenavon had actually spoken to me briefly about potentially being involved with their coaching staff at the under-20s or the reserve team up there. But that would involve, you know, me being up there six days a week. And anybody that does that drive regularly knows that, you know, on a clear road, you're talking an hour and a half, but with a bit of traffic coming out of Dublin or Belfast or whatever, it's, it can be close to two and a half hours. So even though I wanted, I was looking at that next coaching opportunity, I, I didn't really feel that it was possible in uh, in Ireland. So, you know, when this came about, um, like I said, six years probably I've been coaching for, um a little bit like James now, like I sort of started coaching with under 10s, under 11s and, you know, sort of slowly worked my way up and stuff. So I'm over here now coaching four teams, ranging from under 18s is my oldest team, under 9s is my youngest. So I'm getting that real uh, that real mix and coaching four teams, it's keeping keeping me busy. So um, like I said, James is the same. It's a case of like if you're passionate about coaching, if you find that passion that it's just, it's the exact same as it was when you were playing. It nearly doesn't feel like work now. Um, you know, you're you're out here and you're in the sunshine and you're doing something that you love. So, you know, it's 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 amazing to have that opportunity and hopefully um I can stay out here long term. You know, that's that that's the plan. That's the goal, because I don't think there's an awful lot of coaching opportunities for for young coaches back home and, and I do believe there's a lot of really good ones. So I think my advice would be to some people if you if you don't have family or kids and, and things like that and you're you're looking at coaching as a potential career, um, then somewhere like the States might be the best fit for you. And James, from listening to Jordan there, he was talking about the standard and stuff and you've played lots of games and, and again, you know, I've seen little snippets on Instagram and, and Twitter of some of the stuff you've done and some of the games and stuff. You might just explain again to people about you know, the league and, and the standard of players and, you know, I saw, as far as I'm aware, it's very, very professional. Facilities in the States in general are very, very good. Yeah, like, the first year I came out, I was, I was, I wasn't 100% sold on the quality. I don't, I didn't think it was, it didn't blow me away. You know, I thought, I thought back home was a little bit better and then as it's progressed, like the second year we played, there was better teams to come in. I think the, the NASL, kind of folding and going away, better players had come into the USL. So over the years, there's been some top, top players playing. Like Jordan mentioned, like every, every week, like there's, there's really, really good teams with, with some top, top players that you play against. So I do think the standard has gotten better. Uh, I think it's a little bit harder for, for the likes of the clubs that the club I was with, Philadelphia Union 2 is what they've changed. And now it's going to be harder for those teams to compete with younger rosters. It's not possible. You know, they're playing against top class Teams like Jordan's team at Tampa are, are stacked with experienced players that have played in MLS and are now playing at a US le- L level. So it it's great to get the experience for the young lads, but realistically they, they can challenge for titles and stuff like that at, at that end, you know. And for you, you know, when you went, you'd played for, you know, a lot of the top clubs in the League of Ireland and, and been involved in a lot of very big football matches. How did you find the transition from being a League of Ireland player to playing at that level over there and you know were you the best player on the team were you the best player in the league no I wasn't the best player in the league no but I'd, I'd like to I'd like to think I was up there I'd like to think what I what I brought was a little bit different to what what maybe some people thought you know so I, I, I certainly certainly enjoyed it uh, I think maybe the only thing would be our, our home games we didn't get an awful lot of 
an awful lot of people at them. We maybe got 2,000, 3,000 on a good day, a good summer's day. But then you go to play at Tampa in front of like 10, 10,000 maybe, Jordan, yeah? Sometimes. Yeah, just under. Yeah, sometimes, yeah. On, on, a, on a good night, you know, and then you get to play in some top, top stadiums. Like you get to play in, play where Indy, Indianapolis play, you know, like their, their NFL team. We played in some really, really good stadiums, you know, and, and good atmospheres. You also get to travel every second week. To, to go to new cities to experience that. Like, that's not something... Look, you get to go to Galway back home and you get to go to Bally Buffet. That's fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> I don't miss that trip. <laughs> Where you get to... Look, you could be in Ottawa this weekend. You could be down in Tampa the following weekend in Nashville. So you're getting to fly everywhere, you know? And for me, when I was playing the last couple of years, that was... It was really, really enjoyable. Really enjoyable. For you, Jordan, you're gone from playing under 23s with Sheffield United and, and stuff to that league over there. And James just mentioned about some of the home crowds that you guys get, and again, seeing little snippets and stuff. How did you find that? And again, like you're you're 19, you're a kid really, and you know you're you're over there playing in, in a professional league now, in front of probably crowds that you've never played in front of before in, in some very very impressive stadiums. Uh, yeah, I think it's just a real buzz for me. Anyway, I think obviously before the game. Maybe after the game is the real when you really enjoy that kind of stuff. But genuinely, the lads will tell you like when you're playing, you don't you don't really notice it as much. You know, you might you might have a split second during the game. You do something good, or someone does something good, and you'll hear them, and it, it just gives you like a buzz, really. Like it's it's I was at Chef U twenty threes, and like you know you'd be playing in front of say like a hundred old men that like make no noise or don't do anything you know just moan or whatever and then you go to playing in front of thousands of people and it just it's it's great really like you don't notice as much when you're playing but when you do like it's, it's really enjoyable and gives you a great great boost of energy I'd say and for you only you went over on a coaching opportunity I know you're exploring the opportunity to hopefully play as well and you're hoping to be able to to combine both and see where that takes you but I know your main focus is the coaching it is yeah but like even just speak at the players currently playing and even listen to what Jordan's saying, there's no doubt that um, when you're not playing maybe at the level that you were, that you do feel like there's something a little bit missing. Um, it's very hard to replicate that playing in front of crowds. I know you spoke to Wardy during the week about the possibility of playing behind closed doors and uh, and stuff like that and, um, and how players how footballers how much we do appreciate the fans and the atmosphere and stuff like that so it's definitely something I'd miss um, and if there is an opportunity to maybe go back to that and play at, a, at an even higher level um, than what I'm currently playing at here then then I'm hoping that's the case but unfortunately for me um, it's probably going to come secondary to the to the coaching side or at least on a par um, because I've sort of made that decision in my own head that you know I'm here for a long term future and coaching um, so any decisions I make around playing will have to will have to fit around that. But it's um, yeah, for sure something that I'm missing at the moment, and hopefully I can get back to very soon. So apart from talking about the football lads, the reason for this podcast was to hear about people's lives away from Ireland as well. And you know, you're all living in uh, different places of of the states. Some of you are there in James's case for a few years, others only for a few weeks or a couple of months. Owen, with you, how is life off the pitch like in terms of living, driving? trying to cook, trying to clean, trying to make friends and, you know, all that sort of stuff. Yeah, so um, so basically the, the club that I'm coaching at is called uh, Evolution and it's based in Colleyville, which is about 20 minutes outside of Dallas, downtown Dallas. Um, so perfect location, close to the airport, they're close to the, to the downtown. Um, I'm living with a couple of other European lads as well from the UK. The idea behind our club, because the director is Irish, is that they want to try and bring over top quality European coaches to coach the kids and develop the club. Um, so I'm working alongside, you know, other Irish lads, our other ones from the UK, Tomas Boyle, who played um, in the league for a few years, is working at the same club. He's married out here with a kid. Um, he's really enjoying it. Spoke to him before I came out um, and he sort of sold it to me as well. So it's kind of been everything that I was hoping it would be. Um, the difference in quality of maybe the players that I'm coaching. Um, like I'm sure James now in Philadelphia's academy, he's coaching elite players in that age group. Um, with my players, it's a little bit more inconsistent with the teams. Um, 
So it's a it, it's a challenge as a coach, you know, again, four different age groups. I knew what I was taking on when I came out. Um, but the bottom line is I, it was me stepping out of my comfort zone, uh, me becoming a better coach and also the lifestyle. So the lifestyle hasn't let me down so far. It's a fantastic city. Done my homework before I came out and, you know, really, really enjoyed it so far out here. Yeah, I certainly did not do my homework on Texas because we were chatting the other night and I was asking you about it and I was surprised by what you were saying and the places that you've been able to see and just how massive it is. Like, and, you know, yeah. I suppose from that sense, being a lad from Dublin to be able to go and live and work there is something that I'm sure you're still trying to explore different places and, and see what you can. Yeah, like people forget with Texas. Texas is uh, eight times bigger than Ireland and, you know, it's 25 million people in the state alone. Um, the area I'm living in, the DFW, Dallas-Fort Worth area, there's seven and a half here, so almost twice is what there is in Ireland, just in in our metropolitan area. So it's it's a massive sort of, it's a massive city, it's a massive area, there's always so much going on. So when people usually think of Texas, they think of, uh, you know, the Wild West and stuff like that. It's uh, it's certainly not like that where I'm living. Um, very sort of multicultural um, you know, very diverse, a lot going on, great for young people. Um, so, yeah, but like you, Jamie, like when I was told this back in November, December, I was a little bit like that as well. But once I done my homework and um, and once I came out here, I seen it was it was a little bit more suited to me. I think if it was what we originally thought it was, I don't think anybody that knows me would know that wouldn't be my cup of tea. So, I was uh, I'm pleasantly surprised by by what it's like. How is life in Philadelphia, Mr. Chambers, away from the sport and the football? Yeah, it's good. I'm uh, I'm I'm living with my fiance at the minute, so I'm uh, I'm, I'm I'm happy as Larry. I'm uh, I'm not. I'm kind of at the moment. I'm in that that like I said, I was preparing for this. Like, but I'm in that bit where I'm I'm missing the game a little bit. But, but at this current moment, not too much because obviously of the the global pandemic. You know, as in I miss the routine of being told where to go every day, to turn up at the set times, to wear this, to train like this. I, I miss that kind of routine, and I think I'm, I'm searching for that myself. I, I have got in, a, in some sort of aspect with regard to the coaching side of it. We, we, train on a, on a, we train the kids three nights a week, and then they have a game, and we have other groups that we train as well throughout our free academy. So it's, uh, it's, it's good, and I've, I've, the lifestyle to me at the start was... Like Owen is just experiencing it now. I was gobsmacked by it. You know, at the start of the first summer in Philadelphia it was like, Whoa, this is a different class. But now it's just it's just normal now, you know? It's just it, it's just standard. The weather starts to get a little bit better. Everybody's in a better mood, obviously, you know. We live right in the city. So everything is everything is good from, from my end off the field. You know, I've, I've no complaints on that aspect. Just trying to figure out the the, the transition at the moment in from playing into coaching, like I said, that's that's the only thing really that's that's different from my my perspective. So for the youngest man who's 19, he went from living in Dublin up to 16 to living in Sheffield for a couple of years to now living in Florida. Uh, Jordan Darty, I'm very <laughs> jealous of you. How is life there? Um, yeah, it's, it's unbelievable. I mean, what a spot, you know. If I'm gonna, if you were gonna come to the US, I mean. It's not a bad place to come, you know what I mean? It's a uh, great weather, got beaches, it's got it's got everything you need really. And obviously it's like I agree with the lads, like it's just it like I feel like the US is different gravy, you know. Like lifestyle was it's completely different to back home and uh it's almost like difficult to treat not treat it as a holiday, you know what I mean? Obviously you're here for business like at the end of the day, but you know, when you get home and the sun is beaten down and you've you've got to decide do I go to the beach or do I just look after myself properly and stuff, you know. So it is a bit it's difficult, but you know, it's it's a it's a serious spot, like it's, it's unbelievable. So any of you can take this one, lads. Living in America as opposed to being in America on holidays. I've been a few times, I coached in Boston for six months in twenty thirteen. I've been to New York a couple of times, you know, short stints, but for you guys and you know, Jordan's expressed it there, the difference between a holiday and going to the beach and going to work or going for a nap or eating the right foods, you know, how, how have you been able to, to do that? Because I'm sure there's still a place where you go and you go, my God, this is an amazing place to be like. Yeah, I think it's, I think it's just over time. Like the first couple of months you come, you're like, oh, this is brilliant, man. You know, it's like an extended holiday, like Jordan said, but then it, it just becomes the norm then, you know, you just become accustomed to, and it just becomes standard. 
you know, like Jordan down in Tampa has has the beach on his doorstep. So for him going to the beach three, four times a week is <laughs> that's normal. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it's not it's not that big of a deal anymore for him. Whereas if we were to go down, we'd be like, oh hey, here we go, lads, happy days. You know? So I, I just think over time it just becomes the norm. That's that's what I feel like. And I know Jordan's experience about a year before, Owen is still in the first couple of months of it. So it's it, it's different different circumstances and different situations for each person. Yeah, like I, I I know, for example, from a coaching point of view that, you know, last year, you know, coaching away uh, most nights that, you know, you're wearing gloves, you're wearing hats, you, you know, you're freezing out there, especially when you're a coach and you're trying to actually find a way, can I get into the session? Like, do they need an extra body? Do you know, to try and stay warm. Whereas now you're out here, shorts, T-shirt every day is nearly, you know, fantastic. And sometimes you do look around your surroundings and think like, well, like, you know, lucky to be here. Like the facility that we have now, um, training wise, we train at CSA. It's uh, like the Colleyville Soccer Association, their grounds. Like any Premier League side would be um, would be amazed by it. And in some ways you think it's nearly wasted on the players that we have when you see, you know, quality of players back home in the league and stuff and, and the issues with facilities and where teams are training there. And then you think of, you know, what we're exposed to out here. Um, all round, it's just you know, it, it's quality really. Um, and don't get me wrong, uh, there's still parts of of me that misses these things about home. You know, I miss Sundays at home. I miss you know those sort of family days, have me Sunday dinner, whatever it is, going for a few points with the lads, whatever it is. Um, but then there's definitely probably more. I personally feel anyway, there's more positives than negatives out here, and there's a lot of days where I feel very lucky to be where I am. I feel the uh, you know, privileged to have the opportunity to, like I said, to live this lifestyle um, and where I'm living, you know, and, and to be given the opportunity because I know a lot of people would would, uh, would take a hand off to, to be where I am. So, you know, I'm just I'm just enjoying everything at the moment and, and long may I continue. Oh, and why are you robbing my questions? <laughs> what, what was next? Well, no, it's not a list of questions. The idea of an interview is to go with what the lads are saying, and I have a couple of questions to ask at the end, but I did have one uh, later down my list, but I'm going to skip up to it. What do you miss most about Ireland and why? You can pick one thing each. So, Owen's just had the Sunday dinners. What else? Family's an easy answer, isn't it? Yes. Well, you can be an answer. You can whatever answer you want. Yeah, Yeah, that's the obvious one. I was trying to stay away from that one (laughs) because the main... We, 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 we all would have said family, so we'll just leave that as a, as a universal one, and then we'll all pick our own ones. Yeah. Okay, go I, ahead. I, I, I think Dublin's a fantastic city, and I think people sometimes don't don't realise that that like you know we're not leaving a place where we're living in the middle of nowhere, and there's nothing there for us. You know, we're, we're leaving behind a fantastic city where there's lots going on, um, but like like it doesn't have this weather. Do you know what I mean? It, and that that's a big factor for me. You know, but. You know, of course, I miss miss everything about Dublin. I miss friends, miss family. Um, can't get a good point to Guinness over here, so that's a struggle. <laughs> so that's that, that's right up there. I have to say for me, <laughs> don't you? When you're away, you appreciate home a lot more when you're away. Yeah, from, from yeah, definitely, yeah. definitely. Yeah, I'm I'm lucky over here. I have an Irish pub around the corner from me, about three blocks away. The Black Taxi, and they do a fantastic Guinness. Yeah, no. <laughs> I, I'm I'm searching for one. There's there's one of O'Shea is about 10, 15 minutes away, and it's I, I had to tell her how to pull the point properly. So she yeah. gradually got better after every one. She started to get better. So it's, yeah, that's fair enough. <laughs> Six months, months she'll be perfect. <laughs> um, James, for you, you mentioned family, of course. What else? And a point oh. to Guinness. There's I I missed yeah I missed a point to Guinness. I missed a good look like, at chip booty. I missed a chip sandwich. Like, and I mean, like, chips, like the chipper chips. I miss that. Yeah. Like, Can you not we, get them in there, no? No. Nah, they're not the same, and they're fake. And the bread is not the same. It's like a proper chip sandwich with loads of butter. Oh, stop. <laughs> it's probably the first thing I'll do when I go home, straight to Macari's. That'll be <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, it's ten past five here now in Dublin, and I'm about to have my dinner, so you're making me hungry. Uh, Jordan, you miss your dog, is that right? Yeah, I miss me dogs. Uh I, I'd love to get a dog here. I mean, big dog, man. So that de- I'll definitely be getting one here soon. But uh, so one thing, I don't miss it, but I'd love it, is a big Sunday dinner. <laughs> Proper Irish Sunday dinner. Uh, 
that's what that's what I, I don't miss it, but I'd love to have one. So probably for me, just obviously saying family, dogs, girlfriend. Well, yeah, that's it really. I mean, I'm just enjoying where I'm at. So, that's so it. I'm get I'm guessing if I was asking, there was one thing you could bring from Ireland to have with you. You'd pick your dogs, would you? <laughs> well, no, sorry, you might pick your girlfriend. You've got, a, you've got a question to answer trying to, here. Trying to get me in trouble. <laughs> oh, sorry, that just popped into my head. Yeah, <laughs> uh, you pick I have, your, to, have to say, my girlfriend, of course. You know, don't want don't want any trouble. <laughs> Surprised it took you so long. To say <laughs> <laughs> so, Owen, there's one thing you're bringing from Dublin to America to Texas, which what are you bringing? She's oh, good question. It's a good, nah, it has to be, I know, I know it's the obvious answer, but your family, you know, it's, it's a big thing. And my family were actually due to come out and see me in June for a week. Um, you know, everything sort of planned before all this kicked off and, um, you know, I'm probably not going to see them now until October, um, September, October. So, you know, that was the first thing that came to mind when, when all this virus stuff started, um, was that, you know, how long it's going to be until I see them. So. If I, if I could bring anything over now, it, it would certainly be them. James? Yeah, I'd, I'd be the same. Family, like that's, look, you miss little things here and there, of course, but it would be like family and, and close friends. They'd be the only thing that if you could, if you could somehow be them over here, that life would be absolutely perfect. But apart from that, like I said, over time, you just become accustomed to the surroundings. And, and, and you, you do miss home all the time, of course you do, but you just it just becomes the norm. What's the best thing, lads, about living in America? The women. <laughs> the women. <laughs> yes, Owen Weirin is 27 and single, if anyone was wondering. There you go. <laughs> and happy. Not in the virus, though. You're being a good boy, and I know that. James, for yeah. you, what's the best thing about America? My fiance. <laughs> good answer. <laughs> Boys well, are well trained, aren't they? <laughs> <laughs> Great answer. If you answer, yeah, that's the well, that's the that, that that has to be the answer. But okay, away from family and girlfriends and wives and stuff. Oh, what, away from family, like, and the lifestyle, like, is an easy answer. Oh, I, I just, I, I actually, I do. I actually like, I like, uh, I, I really do like what what we have going on at, at our academy. Like, I like, I like work. I like, I love the coaching. Like, and I, I, I like where I'm at right now. So I, I I think that's that's the obvious answer, you know. Yeah, I I'd, I'd be similar um, in in that position that I'm fortunate to be working at a club where I get along with all the staff. Um, there's a really good director coach and you know really good people around me. So I do feel that that's something that I've really enjoyed. And you know, if you don't enjoy your work, it's very hard to sort of enjoy, you know life away from work and I think vice versa as well and um, so that's a big factor for me one of the things that I'm really enjoying the most is you know the people that I'm working alongside and there's some great people over here so and apart from the Florida beaches Jordan what do you what do you like about living there uh mine would be quite similar to the lads you know obviously I'm not coaching but I'm playing so it's just like getting the opportunity to play here like great club great place it's just that's probably that's probably my favorite thing actually about being here, really. Uh, and then obviously, same. You've got you've got the lifestyle. It's a great lifestyle. The weather is beautiful. Um, but, for, but for me, definitely like just getting the opportunity to play here is my main thing. And like as a 19 year old, like when you when you first arrived there, you could have been 18, and you know you've now signed a contract to be there for the next couple of years. Like, are you still walking around, kind of having to pinch yourself, going, "I'm living and playing football in Florida." Uh, I never. To be honest, I never really think about it. You know, what I mean, I just it's it's not really something I think about. I'm just to be like to be fair, I'm really I'm just really concentrated. You know, I want to play, like I want to play at the highest level I can. You know, so it's just for me, it's just about getting there really and putting putting the work in and stuff. So yeah, t- thinking of it now, it is a, it is a bit of a weird one. You know, if I look back like two three years ago, like and say now I'm playing in Florida, I would have never guessed it. You know, so it is a bit of a weird one, but. I mean, hopefully it's just a, it's just something that I'll look back on in a few years as a, as a stepping stone when hopefully I go to bigger and better things, you know? And we mentioned earlier on about, you know, the amount of 
travel involved as a player or a coach in the States. And, you know, I'm sure, particularly in the case of James, being there, the longer you've been all over America. And I wanted to speak as well about, you know, the type of places that you guys have been to and seen, whether you live there, whether you've been there for a night or for a weekend, you know, or for a match. So, like, for you, James, like, when you're going on these trips, are you able to actually see the places? I'm sure you've seen some amazing places and other places maybe you've just seen the hotel room and the stadium. Yeah, it, it kind of depends. Like, you know, I think at, at the very start, when I first started traveling, I was just concentrating on playing. Like, so if if I'd go there, I'd be like, oh, this is like, I want to see the city. This is great. So I'd have a, a stroll. You'd normally get there. If you play Saturday, you'd normally train here on a Friday, fly out Friday afternoon. Jordan's probably similar. You land there Friday evening time. So you have Friday, you have about 24 hours, give or take, before the game. So you have a little bit of time to have a look around the city. And then you'd normally, f- you'd play Saturday evening and you'd fly out Sunday morning first thing. So you have a little bit of Friday night and a little bit of Saturday morning to have a stroll around the city. But then the last year or so, I was I was double jobbing essentially between coaching and playing. So when I travelled to these cities, I was like, I've seen them before. I'm, I'm just sleeping, man. I need to just rest. So I kind of did it. <laughs> did it the way it worked for me. But you do get to see some great spots. In fairness, some places when you go, the stadiums might not be downtown. So they'll house you. And normally what happens here is the other team will pay for the hotel. So the home team pays for the hotel. Okay. So they'll, so they'll put you in a hotel in the middle of nowhere closest to the stadium. So yeah, maybe you, sometimes you could be 40, 45 minutes from downtown. So now it's like, what's the downtown like? Is it worth going to have a look? Do I want to see something down there or am I just doing it for the sake of it? So another one's like in fairness, when you stay in Tampa, they put you right by the water. So it's, it's, it's pretty cool down there to be honest, you know? And of all those places, James, that you've been, where's the best and why? I, I like I like Tampa and not just because Jordan's on the phone, but <laughs> I, like, I like Tampa and uh, and and I liked I liked uh, Toronto and Ottawa. I thought they were really really cool cities. Look, we've been to Nashville, we've been to uh, we've been to Kansas, we've been to some great great spots, you know, New York as well. So, look, I, I, there's no place that I, I jump at and think, oh well, I, I I really really want to go there. But look, if you were giving me a free ticket to go to any place again, I'd take it. There's another question stolen. I was going to ask, is there anywhere that you haven't been that you'd like to go in the States? That's for yeah. you, James, as well. Yeah, I want like, I want to go like California. I just want to go out that direction. I haven't been to the West Coast, like so I'm a West Coast virgin, so I need to get out that way. <laughs> <laughs> Owen, you've uh, landed in where you live and you've been there for a few weeks or a few months. I'm not sure the exact timeline in texas the three months now yeah okay you, have you been anywhere else and and i'm sure how big texas is i'm sure before the virus you were able to see some some nice places and, and have a little explore yeah like uh, austin's about three hours away from where we are in dallas and i was in austin for a tournament for a weekend <laughs> but uh had gone down a day early before the team just to sort of get to see the city um you know to sample it in the evening time and stuff like that and Austin was an amazing city, um, somewhere that I'd love to go back to again for a weekend. Uh, everybody speaks really highly of it over here as well. Um, but like you said, Texas is massive. It takes 10 hours to drive out of Texas, do you know what I mean, from where I am. Um, so like 10 hours back home is, is well, Cork to, Cork to Donegal times too nearly, do you know what I mean? It's, it's kind of, um, it, it nearly has to be worth your while unless you have a few days off or whatever, which which I haven't had at the moment. Um, we've been pretty full on um, with the spring season now here before this started. Um, but definitely, as soon as I get the opportunity, I definitely want to travel around the States. There's places that I want to go and see. Um, again, California be is somewhere that I want to see. I've heard great things about Colorado, uh, New Orleans, places like that. And obviously, I haven't been to Vegas as well. And I'm only a couple of hours on a flight from there, so um, there's plenty of places that, that are on the list. And as someone, Jordan, who is currently playing, and you might just explain about the travel, and, you know, you guys are going on planes quite a lot because, you know, the country is so big. And again, for someone of your age, I'm sure it's a great experience that you're, you're basically living the dream as a footballer with everything there on a plate for you guys to, to go and perform. Yeah, I think uh, James touched on it, you know, about the travel and stuff like pretty much every second week you're traveling to a different city which is which is unbelievable as well because obviously you get to go explore cities new places and stuff but then obviously like what james said again it's it's just like it's that fine balance between like are you like you're you're there for business you know so it's, it's more like it's one of them where it's do you do you want to go and see the city or like do you be do you stay professional like 
you know, that kind of way. So it, it is a fine balance. But obviously, it's, that's one of the things, I think, like playing here, why it's so good. You know, I've been all up and down the East Coast, you know. It's like I've got to see different places and stuff. So that's that's been unbelievable, obviously. Uh, and I think James would agree with me, you know. You get to see these new places and stuff on a free ticket. So, like, you know, I mean, what, can, what, what more can you say? Where of those places was the best? Um, I really like Nashville. I thought that was really good. I enjoyed Nashville. Obviously, I enjoyed I enjoyed New York. Uh, and then I went back there. We had a few days off during the season, so I flew to New York as well so with my family. Met my family there, so I really enjoyed New York and Nashville. They're probably they're probably my two favorites. And speak to me, Jordan, a bit more about like you've got an away game somewhere that's not nearby. How does the week work? How do your couple of days work? I'm sure, and there's lots of you know young lads. I'm sure watching and listening who might have an ambition to go and play in America and go and follow in the footsteps of what you guys are doing. Um, again, you might just explain because people playing in the League of Ireland, whether they be playing 19s or 17s or first team, you're going from Cork to Finn Harps, or you're going from Dublin to Waterford. You're not going from Florida to somewhere else in America for a match. Yeah, that that's the thing, you know, you could be you could be flying for four or five hours, you know, so it's like it's really important to like actually look after yourself like as uh, you know, it sounds good or whatever, but it, it like James will tell you like it's really important because you'll train through the week, you'll train, you'll come in train the Friday morning and then you'll go you go pretty much straight from training to the airport, you know. So then you're flying and you say let's say you have a five hour flight or four hour flight, you're going up to up to New York for us and uh Basically, you'll get there Friday afternoon, Friday night, you know, and then in less than 24 hours, you've got a game. So it's, you know, it's not easy flying. It's, de it's definitely not easy flying. And then, you know, playing a game the next day, you know, you're tight, you're tired, whatever it is. But so it, you, you, you just got to look after yourself, really, you know, got to be really professional about it. And James, as someone who's gone from player to coach now, I'm sure you'd echo those. And um, again, it's important with the amount of, of, travel and stuff involved that people do look after themselves as best possible and, and again I, I'm sure it's something that you'll be in, you know enforcing now in, into your younger players as they grow older is to try and live live the best life they can as, as young pros yeah 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 it is like it's look when you first come over you're like hold on a second this is nuts like I don't I don't really understand this like you know when your body takes a while to get to get accustomed to it then then, then it does like it, it just becomes the norm and you start to figure out what works for you you know some people some people like coaches like to they like to travel and train at the spot. Some people like like to train at home and then travel. It it just depends on what works for for the majority of the group, you know. It it also depends on on flight times too. There might not be flights that leave like right after you train. You they might leave first thing in the morning. So now you have to take a red eye flight. You get to the hotel. You'll train in the afternoon, and now you're you're set up in let's say like a Nashville or or a Louisville or something along those lines, you know. So it it, it just comes down to, to looking after yourself, like Jordan says, you know, and preparing yourself properly. That look, I, I have a I have a tough a tough schedule coming up, you know. That there can be times when you're on the road for like three four weeks on the trot, like you know, you're home, you're back away, you're home, you're back away. That's that's tough, like that's really really tough, but. Look, if you have an air miles number, then you just keep clocking them up and you're laughing. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can use them when I come over to visit to give me my free flights. <laughs> um, last, last couple of questions, because I know you've all got stuff to do. It's the morning time over there. Just give me another five minutes if you can, please. Is that all right with everybody? James, yeah? Yeah, yeah that's cool. Yeah, Thank no you. Uh, all the time that you have, and you know, a lot of it is traveling and is in a hotel or is if you've got a home game, you're still resting. And of course, in lockdown, we're all trying to find things to do away from football and away from being a football coach what do you get up to like to occupy the brains whether that be Netflix or reading or watching movies or going for walks or I don't know what any of these might do that might be might be an interesting hobby yeah I, I'm still I'm still in the middle of my degree online so I'm um that that's keeping me busy and it's giving me something to do every day um you know for a couple of hours I mean my last module so my last few months of that um so that's that's keeping me busy but obviously if you're stuck in front of a laptop or you're, you know, you're reading and you're studying for a few hours, the first thing you want to do, especially when the weather's nice here, get outside, go for a run, go for a walk. Um, we've got loads of really, although we're not close to a beach like Jordan, we've got some really nice trails and, and uh, lakes and stuff nearby. So there's there's plenty of nice places to go to, to walk or run. But, you know, thankfully we're not in the restriction back home of, you know, the 
the two kilometers and stuff like that and we have we have that freedom to to be able to go places and, and things like that as long as we're sensible with it um and then i don't know about the other two lads but from from friday over here um like restaurants are, are opening back up um parks uh movie theaters places like that but with 25 percent capacity so obviously that's going to open up a few more um a few more possibilities and options and then come the middle of may there's going to be phase two where where other things and hopefully we'll be able to resume the sport then in phase two if if all goes well in phase one so hopefully we're we're coming near the back of it over here but it's it's hard to tell obviously you, you forget how big each state is every state needs to be treated like its own country and has its own laws and stuff so what's happening down here might be completely different than florida or, or philly for the other two boys so it's um you know like I said, hopefully in Texas anyway, that we're sort of near the back of it because I'm pulling my hair out at the moment. So it's times are tough. <laughs> Anyone else want to jump in there, James or Jordan, about what you do away from your, your sport and your, your chosen career? You can go ahead, James, if you want. <laughs> go on. Yeah, so I'm like, look, uh, at this moment in time, it's more like... <laughs> It's laptop coaching, to be honest. It's like we we've had a number of projects with uh, with our academy staff and stuff like that ongoing, which have been really really good for someone like me, a young coach who's, who's learning learning from I wouldn't say from scratch, but learn learning essentially the the coaching side of it. Still, I think it's been really really beneficial, you know, and it's given us hours as a as a staff to kind of work together, and uh, that's been hugely hugely uh, beneficial, to be honest with you. Uh, apart from that, similar. Look, I'm I'm trying to get out for a run most days, just just to stay active. I think it's important as well during this time to to stay mentally healthy, you know. So get out for a run, and and that releases such positive endorphins that now your day can be as productive as possible, even though you're still stuck inside. So fr- from that side of it, I, uh, it's been good. I'm also trying to do some stuff, that, some research online and and stuff like that 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 can help me in in the coaching side of things. I have this crazy notion that I want to work from the ground up, from from the the basic age all the way up to to senior level. Whether that happens or not, who knows? But but that's something that I've been I've been trying to trying to get a little bit better at. Jordan, uh, for me, you know, for me, the main goal during this time is probably just to keep fit, really. With like obviously with the weather and stuff here, you know it's tough to play. It's it's the, the humidity is crazy here, and obviously the way we play as well is hard. So I've just been pretty much every day running. I've got a gym put in in the garage, so you know it's been all right. Uh, that's that's pretty much it for me. Other than that, I just smash the Xbox over. I'm on yeah, I, all day. <laughs> I will I will take one Netflix or Football Manager or X. Xbox or PlayStation recommendation each off you before I ask my final question. Who's watching what? Or Jordan, you're you're on the Call of Duty. Yeah, COD for me. Yeah, but uh, Netflix. Netflix was. I'm watching the uh, watching the Last Kingdom now. It's decent. Not bad. I won't give it a watch. Yeah, Ozark would be the the last one I've watched. Just finished it in the last couple of days, so um, looking for something new to start. But really enjoyed that. Um, I've got you now. I think. What are we six weeks in? I've probably got you two or three full full series now. Like so that's keeping me occupied at night. Like 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 James, you actually I'm doing ten to twelve hours coaching online on Zoom and you know, it's not the same, but anything anything to stay productive and, and keep busy at this stage is is a good thing, you know. <laughs> How are you coaching on Zoom? We're trying to do the same with ourselves with the Pats nineteen, so doing some exercise and some football work and that, yeah. but is it is the same over there? Yeah, well, we're we're trying to do it, so we're still trying to do like technical sessions and stuff. So with my players, if if we aim for an hour, two one hour sessions a week, um maybe forty minutes of that will be sort of football drills, and then the, the other twenty minutes will be a little bit conditioning work. Um obviously it gets very difficult week on week to think of more content and new drills, and and especially given that I'm working with four different age groups, you know what's a, what's applicable for eighteen year olds is very different for nine year olds in terms of how to motivate them um but like for say the area that i'm in like the kids are, are really really well off and that's probably what's given me a job here but when they're on zoom you can see how big their backyards are and stuff some of them are as big as like 99 fields you know so um there's no excuse for them not to be able to do the work that 
that I'm giving them at home. And I think we're just trying to make do with, with what we have at the moment. It's not easy, but uh, it's just trying to keep the players engaged and keep them ticking over for when we when we resume play again. Yes, and thankfully, Bar, the odd word like the backyard, you're all still keeping your Dublin accent, which I'm very happy about. Uh, yeah. Jamesy, for you, what's what are you up to away from doing the Zoom sessions and you know out for your runs and stuff? Is there anything on Netflix, or are you are you still a PlayStation man like you might have been in your youth? <laughs> no, I'm too old now, man. I'm grey here. Everything. No, we've uh, look. I've, we we set up a, a YouTube channel for our for our pre academy kids, so we've been giving them. Uh, we've been on that, giving them kind of like a weekly challenge, which is and then. Little small combination. So between filming that and uh, and and trying to get it uploaded and everything like that, things are busy along with Zoom sessions. Look, I'll, I'll get an Netflix in at night. I'm watching how to make how to get away with murder, just in case. So, <laughs> <laughs> see. But, uh, yeah, it is. Put, put down for, uh, if, at, at the moment, it's reminding me of of when we were children, like where you have to. You have to be creative and you have to come up with games. Everybody's trying to do stuff at home. So how can you be creative in that aspect? Because I think that was lost for so long. And yeah. it, you'll see the benefit of this, of kids who are working out compared to the ones who aren't, when we all come back to play. Last question, lads, and you've all been great with your time. Uh, homesickness and trying to deal with not being in Ireland and, you know, the time difference of speaking to family and speaking to friends and, and maybe long, longer term plans to be back in Ireland or to be back in the UK, Jordan, or to stay in the States. Again, anyone can take the first one. How, how are you kind of dealing with all of that? I, I feel like the, the three of us, have all, we're all used to, we've all played in the UK and we've all lived away from home before. So um, I don't think it's a complete sort of, you know, shock to the system and um, you know, you'll always miss people. I think people that are away from home for 20, 30 years still miss their loved ones and um, the city where they come from and things like that. Um, but yeah, that that's just the way it is at the moment, you know. James, Jordan? Come on, Jordan. Yeah, I, I, think, I think he's spot on, to be fair. You know, obviously you miss your family, friends, whatever it is. You, like, you miss home, miss your town or whatever. But I think... Like literally, like what you said, you know, we all went to England young ages, or whatever. So it's homesickness. I don't, I don't think, is a real like big factor for us. You know, I think we're all obviously we're all obviously like motivated and stuff. You know, like going to England at a young age, like these lads are out coaching. You know, like doing what they love and stuff. So you know, it's obviously they're obviously motivated and they obviously want to be there and want to be doing it. You know, so it's like it's easy. You know, and is it any more? Harder for you, given that you're 19, you know, you're still a teenager, you know, Owen is, is 27, James is in his early 30s. So, you know, they've properly been able to grow up. You're still, as we said, quite young. So has that been any more difficult? And, you know, what sort of challenges have you maybe faced in, in that department? I'm sure simple things like missing your parents and stuff is, would be up there. Uh, yeah, it's definitely like different to obviously like my mates or other 19 year olds, what they're doing. But I think if you want it, you know, it's, what, it's just what you have to do. If you want to play... This is this is just one of the one things I've got to do, you know. So for me, it's just like just business, really. You know what I mean? I can always yeah. go home. I feel I feel like when I go home, you know, not not a lot changes. I feel like you know, you go home, people are still doing the same things. Like you know, it doesn't really change. But so I I think it makes the time going home like a lot better as well. You know, like you enjoy it, you really appreciate it, and you appreciate the people around it and stuff. So. Yeah. I, I feel like for me anyway personally you know all year round um you know you miss home a little bit but it was probably the same when i was in england um the time that i, I just feel that i need to be home or i want to be home is christmas time and you know as long as i'm kind of can make that effort and it's possible to get home at christmas i'll continue to make that effort because um that's the one time where i haven't experienced it fortunately i've been all, wherever i've been I've always been able to get home in and around Christmas, so um, that's an important one for me. As you know, rest of the year, you'll have your days where you'll miss home. Of course, you'll be homesick a little bit to an extent, but um, but yeah, Christmas will be the one that you know I, I don't really want to experience it anywhere else other than home. To be honest, James. Yeah, I think the guys are right. Look, you, you experience homesickness the first time you go away from home. That's that's standard. That's the norm. You know. But then over time, I think, especially the industry that we've been in playing and stuff like that, you get used to sacrifices. It just becomes the norm. You don't go to parties. You don't go out every weekend. 
you, you miss weddings, you miss everything like that. They're just sacrifices that you give to play. And and this is another sacrifice that you're giving up being away from home to, to kind of follow a passion and follow a dream and 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 be successful. You know, it just becomes the norm. And very lastly, lads, the podcast again is called Ireland Away From Home and lots of Irish people will be listening to this or watching that that might have an ambition to go and coach and play football or, or even live there. What would you say to them? Sir Gordon Doherty, is that your wind? Is that the wind I can hear in the background or is some person walking by with a wind turbine? I think it's the fella down there, the leaf blower. <laughs> tell him to be quiet. You're on a podcast and you're, you're the only one outside, so I'm definitely blaming you. Sorry, I was just asking lads, if, if, if someone Irish is watching or listening, they might want to go and you know, have a look or look online or research more. What would you say to them? Do it. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 th- I think from that point of view, I'm like, you know, now's the time, especially when you're younger, like you can afford to sort of take those risks and, and take those chances for, you know, for the possibility of a better future or um, maybe better opportunities. You know, I think any of the three of us will look back at it and, and wouldn't regret anything that we've done. I think a lot of people would be the same. So, you know, if the opportunities are there and it's something that they really feel really passionate about and that they know in their heads that they want to do, then, you know, it's a risk worth taking for sure. Yeah, I agree. It's as simple as that, isn't it? It's scary in that, but, I mean, like living away, blah, 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 going to America, you know, different time zone. But when you when you come and when you do it, you get here, like, it's a, it's a different ball game. Like, it is enjoyable and stuff and... Again, if it's like the boys are saying, if it's what you want to do, your passion, your dream, go for it. Definitely. I better book my flight, so. Anyone got a, a, a soul for me to live on for a few weeks? Of course. <laughs> I was expecting uh, a tumbleweed there for a second. There was... No, of course, you're lads. I, I was hoping that, and if there was, I was going to edit it out anyway. <laughs> Listen, lads, thanks so much for your time. Is there anything funny that I haven't asked that might be interesting or anything else that you wanted to speak about? or have we, We've been on for an hour, so I think we cover most things. No. Uh, no, I think that's. I think so, yeah. It's right, everything, yeah. 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 Right, well, in that case. Yeah. Sorry, but. No, I know that you got to go for your class. No problem. James <laughs> yeah, Chambers, thank you very you. much. Uh, Jordan Dardy and Owen Weirin, stay safe. Enjoy getting back to football soon. And we'll see you for uh, a point or an orange juice or a session at some stage when you're home in the, in the, in the next while for holiday. So thanks, Mini, for coming on to the first ever episode of Ireland Away From Home. Thanks, lads. Cheers, James. Cheers, James. Thank you. Thanks for having me.